Hello. Hello, hello. May I have your attention, please? Hello, hello. All right, we're starting. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to San Jose on this brisk morning. Hello to all of our live stream viewers who are joining in from a LinkedIn live event. Uh, and a special welcome to our guests who have traveled from further from the Bay Area into this special event that we are super excited to kick off. Uh, my name is Albert Lilly, CMO for Cibros, and um, very, very proud and honored to welcome our friends and colleagues from Munich, Germany uh, at Sono Motors. They have been embarking on a coast-to-coast uh, -coast tour uh, showcasing their amazing innovative, innovative vehicle, the Scion, which they'll talk about, as well as their solar technology. Um, so I'm going to kind of talk about how today's going to play out, and then I'm gonna, we're going to get this started. Uh, so first, we're going to hear from Heyman Sakaria, CEO of Cibros. Uh, and then we're going to hear from Lauren Han, CEO of Sono Motors. And then we will pass it over to uh, other executives from Sono Motors. And we will then move into uh, a demonstration of the Sono Motors digital app and experience, uh, as well as some of the technology in the back end provided by Cibros uh, that powers some of the connected capabilities. And then we will look at the vehicle itself and do a walk around. So for all of those who are dialed in on the live stream, um, if you have any questions that come up, please enter those into the comment box and we're gonna address those at the end. So we've got an action packed day. So without further ado, I'm going to uh, welcome Hamid Sakari up on stage. So Hamid. Thanks Albert. Uh, and it's really great to have everyone here. Uh, really appreciate all, all of you. Uh, and a special big thanks to uh, the Sono Motors team for making this event happen uh, with Cibros. So we're very excited to uh, showcase the Scion today, the backend technologies. Uh, and also, at the same time, uh, I'd love to uh, talk a little bit about what we do here at Cibros and uh, go from there. So, uh, so our, our vision is to power the connected vehicle ecosystem and we believe that uh, majority of the vehicles uh, in the world will be connected in one way or another very soon. And this applies to everything from two-wheelers and bikes and scooters to trucks and boats, planes and satellites. So everything has a in-vehicle architecture, uh, a network that uh, needs to be updated, that needs to be maintained, data that needs to be collected, and uh, general interactions that need to happen. So we're enabling that uh, revolution to happen. So a little bit about Cibros. So we've been in business for about four years now. We started the company uh, here in San Jose, which is our headquarters. And uh, we've received uh, over $86 million in funding uh, with uh, a lot of key folks on our team coming from Tesla, Ford, Zooks, Google, Waymo, etc. And uh, we have a fantastic group of investors with us as well from Google and Qualcomm, Fontanales Partners, and not to mention uh, some of our key early supporters, uh, Energy Impact Partners, Nexus Ventures, and Moneta Ventures. So that's a little bit about our team. Uh, we, we've, uh, we have about 125 people on the team, and uh, we have customers, uh, over 15 customers, spread across 13 different countries that we're supporting today and very excited for the future. Next slide. Thank you. Uh, in addition, I would like to kind of talk about what is happening. Why, why is uh, a connected vehicle uh, platform important today? And the reason is that without having that connectivity, you can't do software updates or collect uh, meaningful data from the vehicle or interact with the vehicle. So those three things really help shape all the other revolutions that are happening in the space today, such as electrification and autonomous drive. Uh, imagine having a car that uh, does not get updates. Uh, similar to your phone, I mean, if you had to take your phone into a dealership uh, or to the Apple store to get an update, that would be crazy today. But that's the state of the art today with vehicles. And that's one of the problems that we're trying to solve. So the three pillars for success for a connected vehicle are the ability to do software updates, uh, the ability to collect event-driven smart data, 
and to do remote commands and diagnostics with the vehicle. And all three of those are part of the platform that we provide to our customers uh, that range from two-wheelers to four-wheelers and, and luxury passenger vehicles, ag equipment, construction equipment, buses, and, and trucks as well. So we're very excited and proud to uh, work with a variety of different marquee customers in each space uh, and provide this underlying platform to everyone. On top of this platform, a lot of new applications can be built either by Cibros or by our partners or by the automaker themselves. And so that is a key part of enabling the whole ecosystem and, and powering the ecosystem by providing that basic fundamental structure to the industry, everyone else can focus on adding more value on top of that. And that's exactly what we're doing with our partnership with Sono Motors. And so we're very excited about that. Next slide. So a little bit more just generally about our platform. We are a product-based SaaS company. So we deploy our software on the vehicle. Uh, so our firmware sits on the telematics unit and the infotainment system and can manage all of the data collection, software updates, and remote commands to the vehicle, but also connects to our back end, which then processes that data and also visualizes that data for, for the engineering teams and service teams and diagnostic teams at the automaker. And this overall end-to-end -end connected platform is what makes it so special. Next slide. So I'd like to uh, now welcome uh, Laureen Han, the CEO of uh, Sono Motors. But before that, just want to emphasize uh, our key partnership with Sono Motors. And uh, we're very thankful to have been working with you uh, for the last couple of years and also for uh, you know, how we came into this partnership uh, two years ago through a mutual connect. So been very excited and the teams are very well aligned and we think very highly of the overall engineering team and the product. Uh, I'm very excited about the Scion. Would love to hear a little bit more about it from you, Laureen. And uh, so all yours. Thank you so much. Well, it's great being here. I'm Lauren, uh, CEO and co-founder of this company. And I'm incredibly thankful for the whole team of uh, Cipros setting this up, this amazing event. Um, so one shoot, shoot, sh shout out to, to you and your team. Thank you. <laughs> well, with that, a quick overview of what we are doing as Sono Motors. Um, Sono has the mission of putting solar on every vehicle. Because we started 10 years ago with a vision of a world without fossil fuels. And why is that? Well, because fossil fuels are the main driver behind climate change. The burning of fossil fuels is what brings us to a climate crisis. And back then, 10 years ago, my co-founder and myself said, we need to do something about it. And that was the point when we, we went into a garage. Here you can see it on the picture and built the first very first prototype by hand to see whether our vision of a world without fossil fuels can come true. And it was an incredible journey the last, you know, the last 10 years, going from a garage to a global vision, being now a NASDAQ listed company uh, with IPO in 2021. And our company is building up on two pillars, a solar business and a car business. The solar business is a B2B business where we license and sell our technology to trucks, buses, vans. And the car business is, is this beautiful car here, SEV, the world's first affordable solar electric vehicle, which you know, retails for $25,000 and has several features we will go through later today which are unique in the market. Now, as of today, um, I want to focus now first on the solar technology and then go into the car in more detail later. So let's start with some tech. Because we think it's exactly the right time to put solar on every vehicle. Why is that? Because we control the whole value chain 
of solar integration into a vehicle. From the cell itself to the injection molded outer skin to the power electronics to even the software. Now, we've just engineered that for the vehicle, but one and a half years ago, we noticed we can sell this to other manufacturer. And that's what we do. We have a retrofit solution for existing vehicles, like you can see here on this slide, which is a solar bus kit, which goes onto vehicles like a bus, saves 400 gallons of diesel, and has a payback time of three to four years. On the other pillar, we are actually integrating solar into serious vehicles of OEMs, trucks, buses, transporters. And we have been pretty good at attracting new customers, such as Mitsubishi, MAN, or Scania, big corporations who are now integrating solar into their vehicles. Now, I want to end this with this picture and leave you with that, because there's so much more potential out there. There are 100 million vehicles we build as a society every single year, and we think in the future, all of them should have solar on top of it. With that, I'm handing over to Thomas, our COO, to talk about the car and the solar angle of it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Laureen. Also, thank you from me to hosting us here in the Bay. Pretty awesome. And of course, I have the best job today. Well, maybe you will, you will not agree, but I think I have the best job because I can talk about our Xeon. And before I start talking about why the Xeon is so great, let me make one point that we try to put in the next slide. That point is that solar technology does not only make sense for the Xeon. Solar technology makes sense on every electric vehicle. Uh, and for me, being an old man, being around the industry for nearly 30 years, solar today feels like talking about electric vehicles 10 or 15 years ago. Consumer doesn't fully understand it, at least the majority. There were always some very smart ones. OEMs don't really fully understand it. Well, maybe not all. There were always some smart ones around. But for solar, it's really that in the trends that Laureen described earlier, when this technology is really true, as we present it here and as we show it in our car, it not only makes sense for a small 1.5% segment share that we see for the Sion and other vehicles off that platform in the future, it's actually true for 100% of all electric vehicles in the future. Now, okay, I can tell you a lot of things. Let me prove the point with the first affordable solar electric vehicle. It is very affordable, 25,000 euros or dollars at current exchange rates, net, before any sales tax or VAT. It is a family van, a family hatch for five people. And it has, in our configuration, three core differentiators. One is solar, and I'll spend some time talking about it, but Basically, it gives you 3,700 miles of range in the southern part of Germany, nearly 5,000 miles in New York, nearly 6,000 miles in Los Angeles. And it's not even the core part that you get 6,000 miles for free, 100% clean energy. But if you're a commuter, for example, in uh, German cities where the metropolitan commuter drives about 10 miles a day, it's possible that between March and September, you might not have to plug in your car at all. And that's convenience, and that's one of the core features for this affordable vehicle for everybody. Keep in mind, not everybody has a house, owns a garage, can plug in. We want that everybody is able to drive electric. And this could be a story of some crazy German engineers that tell you the future is wonderful with this technology, but as Lauren pointed out earlier, we have already proven the point. Over 20,000 people have made an average down payment of 2,000 euros. We have another over 20,000 vehicles pre-ordered from uh, business customers. And so we know that of our life cycle volume of 257,000 units, already a big share is taken for the first uh, couple of years and months. Now, uh, let me show you in the next chart how beautiful not only the Golden Gate Bridge is, but also the vehicle. It was a pleasure for the first time to come to the US and actually show off the car. And I would be interested to hear 
your opinion of the people that are here, because people that see the car here for the first time say, oh, it's much bigger than expected. It has a very spacious interior. While it's a C-segment or compact vehicle, um, the interior is very large. So not only five people can fit inside, but also a lot of stuff. And the outside design is following our principle of form follows function. We have made sure that we can put solar on every spot where we don't have to put a window. And that's why this vehicle uh, is so efficient. And I think it's really beautiful. <laughs> Looking around, nobody, nobody uh, is, uh, is brave enough to disagree. Uh, very good. No, I think it is. And actually, I'm not the only one. When we introduced the first series validation vehicle in summer, to a group of supporters and uh, people who uh, ordered the vehicle earlier, the excitement was clear, as you can see here in the picture. People were thrilled. Here, this vehicle number 10 is part of the series, and uh, I will later tell you a little bit more about the vehicle. But uh, let me up by saying uh, we actually have two beautiful areas of business. Um, the solar business and the solar technology is at its core for both areas of business and we have a market validation. And with that, I'm handing it back to the master. Oh, sorry. With that, I'm handing it back to the master of our digital uh, product division, Johannes Bückle. Thank you, Thomas. I hope you can hear me well. Um, wow, uh, it's night already here. Good morning, welcome. Uh, my name is Johannes. I'm the head of product for our digital services. I want to give you a quick overview about our digital services that you'll see in action here as well, and also explain why we chose this partnership. If we can go on the next slide and then just go one slide further. Perfect, thank you. Um, Thomas already said it, the Sion is made to be shared and it comes as a connected car for our customers. Um, so we are basically in the Sono app combining four different digital services. The first one is MySeon. It's basically digital access to your car. It's a digital key. It provides the most meaningful information and events to you, like you know, charging as finished, et cetera. Everything you need to you know, operate your car as a car owner. And then there's car sharing. It has both sides. You know, as a car owner, you can decide if you want to use that, you can you know, make it available on certain time slots during the week. And then as a user, you're using exactly the same app, you know, just to find cars that are being shared around you and you use them as if they were your own. On the mobility side, there's also ride pooling. So basically we offer an easy way for drivers to share the location and pick up other riders on the way, an easy way to get sustainably from A to B. And then lastly, power sharing. Thomas mentioned bi-directional charging on one of the slides. And it's basically the car can also give energy to someone else. So you can charge your electric bicycle, you can charge another car if you want to, or even your home as a mobile battery storage. So to do this, we kind of need reliable and fast connectivity. And this is you know, why we partnered with Cipros. As an OEM, especially as an upcoming OEM, we want to create paling customer experiences. So our focus is a customer and a community driven company are these people on this picture, right? We want to make sure we, we find the things that are valuable for them and design them so they can use them well. And it's especially, you know, this focus with partnerships so valuable to us. Uh, by partnering with Cipros, we as an OEM can focus on our customer experience, improve it over lifetime, and use the building blocks that we have uh, through the Cipros product. Let's look at them, right? Um, a connected car, the Sion. We basically have like three products by Cipros in solution. We use over the air updates to improve functionality for our customers without the need to visit a garage anymore, right? Uh, we use real-time data to provide our services like car sharing, you know, where is the car right now? As an European OEM, you know, GDPR compliance is quite important to us and we can achieve it with this solution. We can even, you know, if a customer opts out of data usage, we can basically tell the car to stop sending any data. Um, so we don't even see the data from, from our customers anymore. Um, we use commands to interact with the car. You know, you can uh, obviously lock it, unlock it, but also, you know, stop a charging session if you're not close by and do things like that to control your car uh, when you're not close by. And 
I mean, these slides are nice, but we want you to experience it. So um, LP, who's our program manager at Cyprus, she's over there on stage and she'll give you a little live demo right now. So you can actually see all those places, uh, all the Sono app and the Cyprus product uh, at work. Thank you very much. I'm super excited to show you how it works today and uh, yeah let's get started so as Johannes said we want every Scion customer every Sona Motors customer to have a meaningful experience with their car and part of that uh, in the world today is data so the first thing I'm going to show you uh, in the app is the state of charge of the vehicle we can see that it has 35% uh, state of charge and then the next thing that I'm going to do is unlock the vehicle. This is a demonstration of Command Manager. You can see the lights flash there. Another uh, really important piece of the customer experience is to show how much energy the vehicle is uh, generating at any time. So right now we're under a tent, so you're going to see zero kilowatts of energy coming from all the solar panels. Later today when we take it for a test drive, we'll be able to show you in the app again uh, how that status has changed. All right, so that, those are two things that as an owner of a Scion, you might want to like know on a daily basis. But as a car sharing user, uh, we also have a very unique experience and we would like to show that to you today. and I'll need my own device uh, for this <laughs> presentation, so pardon me while I swap it out. All right, let's see, we got that going. <laughs> Waiting for our AV team to catch up here. All right, cool, we've got it, thanks guys. Okay, uh, we can see in the app here that this vehicle is available to reserve now. I'm gonna go ahead and tap that button. And here it gives me the option to digitally unlock the vehicle. So I'm gonna do that and walk over now. You can see the lights flash, you open the door. I'm gonna go back to the vehicle status really quickly. Moment. All right, and it gives me the option to lock the vehicle again and end the trip. So after I press the end the trip button, it actually generates a receipt, which goes to both me and the owner of the vehicle, so that way they can see what happened. All right, thank you very much. I uh, want to hand it over to my colleagues who will show you the behind the scenes of how this works on the Cibros portal for both Command Manager and Deep Logger and our Deep Updater. Thank you, everyone. We're very excited to show the Cibro solution, which uh, contains an all-in-one end-to-end solution that allows Sono to maintain, manage, and upgrade their fleet, and in the end, enables these amazing experiences with the Scion. Myself, I am Jazz. I'm the technical lead for the Command Manager product, which allows us to send commands, such as the lock and unlock, which we just saw through the mobile app. And my name is Smee Claire. I'm the technical lead on the firmware side for the Deep Logger product, which is our over-the-air data logging solution. So right now, hopefully you guys can see my screen. I have a vehicle page opened up for the exact Scion vehicle that we have right here in front of us. You can see here that we have some basic information such as the VIN, the make, the model, and the actual trim level. So these are all details that the Scion team have configured in our vehicle model management solution. And then right below that, you can see a custom dashboard that they've created as well to show data that's being uploaded directly from the device. So you can see and uh, the battery state of charge right now, which is 35.5%, which is exactly what was shown on the app by LP before. You can also see the connection time, some body control statistics, such as what the status of the lock uh, on the vehicle is, as well as you can see some more information on the solar power panel input. So all this data is fully configurable directly from the cloud. There is no need to update any software on the firmware when someone wants to change the data that's being logged. 
So if I were to go over here into the configs page, <clears throat> you can see the exact configuration that's live on the vehicle. So this allows the uh, Scion team or uh, d diagnostics teams at Scion at their dealerships to configure exactly what data that they want uploaded to the cloud. So here they can specify the signals uh, by going here, uh, looking into the CAN network and creating a new signal or a message that they want to log, and then specifying the actual logging interval as well. Like Johannes was mentioning earlier, everything here is GDPR compliant. So if a user on the HMI was to opt out of data logging, none of, this, none of these actual signals would be sent up to the cloud. The team is also able to create more advanced logging conditions. So for example, if they only wanted to log data when the speed is, oops, when the speed is greater than 20 kilometers an hour, and you can see it's very easy for me to just go through, find the signals that I need, and add them here. So I want to go speed, and I want to go find the gear position. So I can just easily go in and add those, create my conditions, and specify the signals that I want to log. So for here, if we were to deploy this right now, uh, we would only see the engine four message uploaded from the vehicle when the vehicle is, is driving over 20 kilometers an hour and the gear position is set to drive. If I were to go ahead and now deploy a new logging configuration here, I've selected one that's logging all signals from the vehicle. I can go ahead and simply click deploy. This will, during runtime, change the logging configuration that's loaded on the vehicle and the vehicle will start uploading data based off this new logging configuration in real time. So if we were to go back to the dashboard now, I can see some signals that I have uploaded already. Um, this dashboard, like I was saying before, is fully configurable, so you can move around the widgets, uh, reorganize everything, and you can even change what data you want to show. So if I look at this battery state of charge widget, um, and I want to add, a, let's say, the state of health, which is another metric that's available, I can simply go in here, add and edit the widget, search for SOH, uh, which is the state of health, add it in, and you can see now that both signals are available. So I can just update the widget there. It'll update on the dashboard, and it'll be visible for all users of the dashboard. And from here, I can now then also readjust the widget itself so then it fits a little bit better onto the screen. So I can just easily go ahead and do that. And as you can see, everything's super user-friendly. So the tool is designed not just for the engineering team, but also diagnostics teams and data science teams. So we want to make it as easy as possible for anyone to be able to configure this portal log the data that they want, and get the information that they need. So if I were to, let's say, zoom in onto some data that was logged here while the vehicle was driving, you can see the actual solar wattage output for each of the different sections from the Scion that LP was showing before, but since we were under a tent, we couldn't see. Right here, we're looking at historical data that was uploaded by the vehicle while it was driving, you can see the actual wattage and values. So you can see that for all the different regions, such as the roof, the lower side on the left-hand side, and everything like that. And when you're going through and playing with the widget, you can see all the actual information uh, for each individual signal. So now let's say an engineer on the Scion side was looking at this data, and they saw uh, something that needed to be changed by issuing an over-the-air update. They would be able to easily go into the deployment side. Oh, let me save this widget here for everyone. Go into the deployment side and issue an update. Here in this deployments tab, you can see all the deployments that have happened to the vehicle. So you can see the log configuration that I just deployed out at 1033. And you can see an update that had happened as well. So if I go into this rollout, I can see an update that the Scion team had initiated for about 10 vehicles, uh, which is their uh, pre-production fleet that you, you see before us. Here, you can specify uh, the package that you want to roll out, what vehicle groups, and whether you want to have some more granular control, such as scheduling the update to happen at a later date or staging the update so that it's happening at a rolling uh, rate. So it's only doing 10% of the vehicles at a time in case there are any issues. From here, this gives you the whole fleet level view. If I want to go in deeper to the actual in-vehicle level, I can go ahead and click a particular vehicle. It'll show me the exact view. So here I can see that uh, the update took about 30 minutes from the request being started to the vehicle responding back saying the update is complete. This entire process cor corresponds to the vehicle coming back online, getting user consent from the vehicle to make sure that uh, the user wants to do the update, checking any preconditions to make sure that the vehicle is in a safe state before actually doing the update, which is why you see it taking about 30 minutes. Because it's going through all these safety checks and user consent flows to ensure that the update is only happening when the user wants it and when it's safe to do so. And this allows you to go into as much granular detail as you want. So right now I'm at the vehicle page. 
Uh, now I'm going into the actual individual ECU, which is the VCM, which is our connectivity module. And from here, I can even go into each image region. So here I can see the very low level logs, which are very useful for debugging uh, for the engineering teams on the exact process that's happening to do this update on the vehicle in real time. So this is a brief overview of our deep updater and our deep logger products. I'm going to now give it back to Jazz to give you a little bit more details on the command manager and show you how that works in our portal as well. Thank you. Yeah. So it's important to note here that all of these features have been done remotely over the air. And the vehicles were not needed to be brought into a service center or dealership and plugged into some device over wire to do the update. This is entirely over the air, which is an amazing experience for the drivers. And uh, overall, it's just, it's just um, the state of the art that we need for the automotive industry today. So the third pillar in our uh, in our end-to-end um, -end solution is the command manager. And we can access that under the commands tab here. Here we see a bunch of commands that we may have seen before through the mobile app, lock all doors, unlock all doors. So let's go ahead and adjust the time window to the last hour. And here we should be able to see the lock the unlock all doors request that was sent by LP actually on the mobile app at around 10.30 a.m. Um, Pacific time. And over here, we can also issue an unlock command from uh, the web portal as, in, uh, as a technician. And there, we can verify on the vehicle that it was unlocked if someone wants to go ahead. <laughs> Thanks, Albert. Yes, I'm right here. And there we go. <laughs> Yeah, and overall, this just allows engineers and technicians to, again, remotely diagnose the vehicle. Um, again, there's no need to, you know, as vehicles have been doing in the past and even today in many, um, in many areas, we have to bring them into service centers, uh, connect them into uh, over wire. Um, but realistically, that shouldn't be happening with the um, going forward with the automotive industry. So this just enables really really flexible uh, diagnosis that can happen easily over the air. And overall, this entire suite, all three of these products combine into an all-in-one solution that provides Sono with the ability to manage, maintain, and upgrade their entire fleet with the click of a few buttons. And in the end, it enables these amazing experiences for the drivers and riders of the Scion. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for listening. All right, thanks so much, guys. Appreciate that. And um, that was especially impressive. This is a live demo. So as we all know in technology, uh, sometimes those can uh, uh, go different ways. But that was very awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And at this time, uh, I want to say live stream watchers and viewers, hang out with us. Uh, we've got a special treat for you now. I'm going to welcome back up uh, Thomas Hausch to give us the moment we've all been waiting for, which is a personalized guided tour of the Scion. Thank you so much. Thank you. Also, a big thank you to Jess and Sumit for showing us what a car, a modern car, should be able uh, to do. Namely, that you can give it away to anybody else as easy as sharing an Airbnb room. And rooms are usually bigger than cars. So why shouldn't we be able to do that? Wonderful technology. So let's have a quick look around the car which we brought with us all the way from uh, Europe and Germany. Let's get started maybe on what everybody uh, gets excited about, the solar cells, one of our three key differentiators to other vehicles on the market. And we're using 456 solar half cells that are copper back contacted, uh, uh, a visual benefit, but also it makes the cells much more robust in case they get slightly damaged. And it also allows us because they're half cells, to actually utilize every single area of the car uh, to maximize for power cells here on the fender, uh, for example. Then one other thing about sharing, uh, leaf if you have uh, an aluminum wheel. So what we've decided to go with very rugged uh, uh, wheels. Here you have uh, beautifully designed steel wheels. You might know that from heavy duty police cruisers or, or other vehicles. Uh, they're good looking, but at the same time, uh, if you have a not so capable person who drives it, you don't have to take our insurance, which is standard for car sharing, uh, because there is no scratch or it's very easy to replace. Well, let's move a little bit more forward to this vehicle. 
Um, uh, of course, you can see or cannot see the half cells all around the vehicle. But let's go to the third item we haven't talked about yet on the vehicle, the bidirectional charging. We talked about sharing, we talked about solar, but we didn't talk about bidirectional charging. So what you have on this vehicle, first of all, it's a standard electric vehicle, which you can charge level one and level two. So the professional EV drivers know what I'm talking about. And of course, you can also fast charge for our vehicle with 75 kilowatts. Now, uh, this is pretty typical for a modern EV, but what's not typical is that you can discharge the vehicle uh, at 3.7 kilowatts. This is a German slash European household plug. Imagine here at 110 volts for the US with uh, potential 3.7 kilowatts. And more importantly, and where we really have a unique position is 11 kilowatts uh, getting out of this Manicus plug the other way, possible by our uh, patented and proprietary um, uh, DCU technology that we have in the vehicle, where we not only charge via solar the battery, but can also discharge the vehicle uh, at very high AC rates. For example, for home energy management system, charge up another electric vehicle, or just use it uh, on the grid with any vehicle to X function. Hmm. So we talked about the three things that are unique about the car, um, but it's also affordable. I mentioned twenty-five thousand uh, dollars or euros, um, but we all, maybe not all, but a lot of us have thought about buying a car, owning a car, uh, renting a car. The main question, of course, is uh, not how do I look in the car, but <laughs> what is the function? How how much can I really do with this vehicle? And it's not only built to be rugged, it's also built to be really spacious inside. So let's have a little look inside, in the front and the rear. I think we'll, we'll start with the rear for a moment. Maybe we have two volunteers from Seabros to go in the rear and maybe Heymond can sit in the driver's seat and we can show you really that five people should, should fit easy. Thank you Heymond for playing a model for us today. Very good. Yep, two more people maybe sit in the rear. Perfect. And in the rear, we're actually not seating three. Um, so you can see that really three people can conveniently sit in there. Yeah, maybe you can move to the middle. Yep, perfect. So there should have a third person space. Okay, I can go in there for a moment. It's true. Yeah. We can sit comfortably. Yeah. Very comfortable. I remember you were six foot three, right? About six foot three. Very nice leg room here. You can look fully back. Your head is not touching. No, has not very good. I like it. Yeah. Very good. Very There's some headroom. Let's see how this looks up front. All right. You can see we didn't do the usual car salesman trick and uh, move the front seat to the very <laughs> front. So there's space in the rear. I, I have plenty of space here. How do you feel? Very comfortable. The seats are very comfortable and a uh, lot of leg room. Actually, I think I might have to move it front <laughs> to be. Um, but yeah, it's very comfortable, good view, good uh, view out the front dashboard as well. Now comes the point that we didn't rehearse and never talked about. Mm -hmm. Have you already ordered a Scion? <laughs> it's about two and a half hours, 10 bucks 50. Um, our business model works like this, that very likely I only get uh, $7 out of motors, took 350 to insure this vehicle during the trip. So you don't have to worry about when you give uh, the car away. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then uh, later, when we have the car outside, you will actually see us producing energy. Um, we have here a fake uh, display on how this could look like uh, in, in the history and in, in the last uh, uh, 30 days in the future. But uh, um, stay here to see live how we generate power when it's not covered uh, by a tent. Um, and uh, uh, charging is another nice feature. Uh, we talked about the regular function of an EV. I think a lot of people here in the Bay Area have electric vehicles, so they know a function to protect mm -hmm. your battery to 90%. You can limit the charge here, but you can also make it higher or lower for your charge target. More important, if we do the second feature that's also enabled by Zebras technology, power sharing, you can actually say, today I only have a 35% charge on my vehicle. Uh, I still want to give power away for free or for money, and uh, I only need to drive uh, a couple miles home, so I'll want to keep for sure 10% charge. So I set, set my discharge limit at uh, 10%. And uh, with that, I can give at least 25% away. If the car is in the sun, it might actually increase what I can give away. 
Uh, and, and these features are also, uh, again, enabled by your technology, uh, Heyman. So big thank you to you and the team. Uh, and I think with that, I can wrap up the car presentation. Thank you so much for helping us. Thank you, thank you, Thomas. Okay, um, so, so we've gotten through our content and we've gotten through our demos, our tech demos and our car viewing. And so what we wanted to do before we broke for uh, mini rides and lunch and all that good stuff, um, also to address our uh, live stream viewers is um, open up for questions and answers. So uh, Samantha, if I could have you help me. But before, I know we've already collected quite a few, so we're going to get through as many and pick some of the ones. But before we uh, answer some of the questions, and I'll direct them where they need to go, but before we answer some of the questions that came in online, I want to open it up to anyone here with any questions for either the Sono team or the Sibros team. And I, if just raise your hand, I can come run to you, or you can tell me, and I'll repeat it back. We'll make it easy. Any questions here? Yes, sir. You want, you want to play it back to me, or you want to? Oh, yeah. Either way. Yeah, I was wondering what's the, can you explain the sort of matte finish on the vehicle um, from Sono's perspective? And, and the other, other question while we're waiting, is that a Chatamo uh, plug, or is that a CCS plug? Thank you, I recognize the automotive background. <laughs> so um, first, the vehicle is matte, not because it looks good, but because it has a function of breaking the light. Uh, if you have a certain angle on a very shiny vehicle, you don't get the full uh, harvest of the sun. So our engineering decision was to make it matte black, and then we uh, tried to make the other parts fit in the same color. Good question, it reminds me uh, of our seventh generation. This vehicle is series uh, grade except the panels, they're still in the seventh generation, so there will be another grade level coming uh, after this one. Next question was regarding the plug. It's a Euro CCS plug, which is comparable to the uh, US uh, uh, CCS plug. It's not Chademo. Okay, thank you. How about anyone else? Any other questions from those of us who are here in person? Don't be shy, raise your hand if you do. I'll come to you. If not, we'll jump into some of the questions we're getting online. Oh, I've got a question here. Uh, this is a question for the Sono team. I think something we're all dying to know, uh, the MOS in the dashboard, um, how does that work? Can we explain that? That's something I've never seen in another vehicle. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm looking at Laureen because actually the three founders had this in the vehicle from the very beginning. Um, and uh, the original intent was that it was fully filtering all particles out. Uh, it turns out it filters really well, but not everything. So we added an automotive filter uh, in the vehicle as well. But it uh, is uh, moss, uh, organic matter. Uh, and uh, it's beautiful to display it. It has some filter function, and uh, everybody loves it. So we kept it in the car, but you can actually replace it with other things you want to display. Uh, there were some other vehicles in the history that put little things in a car where you could maybe put a flower in there. I don't want to talk about the brand. But so uh, this is a very unique approach. Okay. Want to maybe we'll address some of the other ones. And, and by the way, um, so a lot of, we'll be here for a little bit longer through lunch. So if there are any other questions, you know, we'll all be here. So we'll take a few questions from uh, those of us that are online now. Um, okay. I've read that the Scion will have software updates. Can this include firmware updates, or is it just limited to the screen UI, like some other OEMs? For example, can the software managing the solar panel controllers or the cameras be updated? Are you Samit, you want to take that one? Uh, so the short answer to that question is that the all the firmwares on all the downstream ECUs can be updated. So our solution allows you to have full connectivity down to each individual ECU. So that includes the body ECUs or even the solar ECUs like that was mentioned. Uh, so you'd be able to issue a software update and update every single ECU. Uh, so if there's any changes to the body controller or the solar panels that need to be done through the firmware, uh, the Scion team will have the capability to do that. Thank you, Samit. Here's another interesting question that um, actually I was wondering too. Um, Patrick asks, will this car be available in different colors besides black? Maybe Thomas. Thank you. So for now, a clear no. And uh, nobody of you asked yet, how is it possible that these 
people can build a car company that makes such an affordable car. And there's, there's no magic involved. Uh, our magic is actually our business model. For this vehicle, we decided to go with one version, zero variance. So 20,000 people made all a down payment for the same car. It's a very well-equipped car, but we get huge economies of scale that rival high-volume producers because we only make one car. I like to call it it's uh, a Swiss pocket knife and not a Gucci handbag. So if it's important for you to have different colors, this is not the right car for you. Of course, we can make it in different colors. At a later date, we might want to do it. Uh, we even talked about uh, changing the colors of the solar cells. You can also change colors there. But for now, we want to stay true to our mission uh, to um, uh, look for a, a solar panel or solar technology on every vehicle and make this the world's first affordable solar car. So right now, the answer is uh, no, only black. Thanks, and um, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna actually, there's some other good ones for uh, our friends at Sono. I'm gonna go ahead and address those since um, I think a few of you have to, to leave after this. So uh, the other question related to uh, Sono Motors and the Scion is how do car washes or brush washes affect the longevity of the solar panels on the buses in the Scion car? Shire, I should just keep you up here, huh? Uh, thank you. And I have to point out, of course, Laurin or our CFO, Torsten, who's here, our very competent uh, Sono Motors team that did the whole U.S. trip would be able to answer this. So I guess I'm chosen because I'm the best looking of them. <laughs> okay. Now I see disagree. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I know it's not true. Um, so car wash. Um, actually, micro scratches in polymer are good for us. Uh, uh, if, if you have uh, a closer look at your car and you drive through car wash, sometimes you want a brushless one because you see these micro scratches uh, reflecting in the sun. So th that is not bad for the car. Uh, the opposite is true. Keep in mind that polymer on a car is normal. Um, very likely the car you have, your bumper is polymer already. Um, a lot of low volume sports cars, expensive sports cars have a uh, polymer parts that are more than the bumper. So it's, it's something that the industry is used to and we're using uh, uh, industry standard materials uh, for these. I usually make super short answers. No, so that's perfect. Well, look, while no. you're there, let's just get the other one because we have right. come in. So the other one was, uh, this is an easy one, but I'm curious about this too. Should I, this is a real question, should I pronounce it Scion or Zeon? I've heard it presented and said differently. This is such a kind question. Thank you very much for asking it. Um, uh, let me first, I'm German. I worked for 20 years at Mercedes-Benz, or Mercedes-Benz, as you call it. So if you're a German, you pronounce it Zion. And if you want to uh, use it as the original Zion, you can call it Zion, of course. But Zion is OK as well. So we're, we're absolutely flexible here. Awesome. Great. I think that's. Um that's, that's the, some of the top questions we got, so we threaded them in. So thank you for that, Thomas. And I think we've got time for one more question, then we'll kind of break and, and have lunch, and people can look at the car, and we might do some mini rides. Um, ah, there's a question. Sure. Yes, sir. Thank you. I actually have two questions. Please. Oh, so the first one is, what voltage is this car? What's the battery voltage? Uh, and the second is, I think Lauren mentioned that the, on the bus, the, the payback was three years. I assume that's a financial payback. What is the energy debt that it carries, and how many years does it take to pay back the energy it took to create the solar cells? Great questions. Um, 380 volts um, battery. Second question, um, under one year. So the solar panels um, on the bus kit are in the month of payback. So it's pretty pretty unique. So it saves per year four th four tons of CO two metric tons, and um, you know comes comes with a little bit I think w over a ton or something um, on on uh, baggage of of CO two which was emitted during the process of producing those solar cells. Thank you very much. You're welcome. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we're, we're way ahead of schedule. If you can unlock that, Nancy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we, we do have time for just a couple more. So if there are any other questions out here, we'll take them. But otherwise, OK, right here. Here are the other ones. What is the voltage rating in that one? 
Okay. Ah, here's a good question, and this might be for our team on the Cibro side, uh, possibly. But how often does the firmware over, over the air update take place, or how often is this vehicle updated? And I think there's some real life experience with this response. But go ahead, Jack. Yeah. So the rate at which the firmware is updated is completely up to um, Sono team or in the end. But after after the Sono team deploys a new update. Um, the final say on whether that update will actually occur actually happens inside the vehicle, uh, which is a user consent. So the user has to consent to agree that the new update shall be applied to their vehicle. So in the end, it's all up to the users. Thanks, Jess. Thank you, Jess. Any other questions out here? No? OK. Um, do we? Yes. I'll run it over there. Getting a workout today. There you go. Thank you. I'm just curious. I'm from Vancouver, Canada, and we have a bunch of car sharing companies there already. And I'd like to buy a lot of these and just replace the gas cars that those companies are using. But in terms of the business model for your car sharing, you mentioned a few dollars would go towards insurance and other things. How much of that is insurance versus profit? Because like in Vancouver, we already have all that insurance worked out. So yeah, just curious about that business model side, how that works. Well, thanks uh, for coming out all the way from Canada. A big applause for that. <laughs> and then I can just give you the example of our right now live, being live, Germany car sharing experience we do in, in a beta phase. There we have a, a car sharing live where we take right now 10% um, share of the right and then I think, and I'm not mistaking the numbers, I think it's $5 per right on insurance. But it's just in Germany right now, and it will be different in every single country depending on the insurance and what we work out. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think we're going to wrap up the Q&A for now, um, but we will um, be happy to take any other questions and answer those. Uh, we'll monitor the comments box, or you can visit uh, either of our websites and, and obviously contact us through there, um, sibros.tech or sonomotors.com. So for now, we're going to break for lunch, and we're going to be, you know, feel free to vehicle out, and um, I'm going to revert to my friends at Sono Motors and some of those helping to coordinate this event to uh, take the next steps here. Uh, but for uh, I want to thank everyone for coming out, and um, thank you to our friends who have come here from far away and uh, I think you've got one more stop in uh, Southern California, so we wish you the best on that. And I want to thank all of the folks who've uh, tuned in uh, on our live stream. Uh, thank you for that. So for now, uh, we're going to sign off on the mics, and uh, let's mingle. So thank you very much again. Woo!